Hey everybody, this is Steve Hutchinson, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to go over what I call um, our million dollar playbook. I think everybody's going to get something out of this, whether you've been in the business um, two years, a year, 24, 24 years, 35 years, <clears throat> there's something in here for everybody um, today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure I've got my screen and everything up and get rolling here. So first I'm going to talk about the normal slow way, uh, what I would consider the slow way of handling the appointment sequence and uh, closing for sales as it relates to annuities and AUM. So the normal slow way, you meet with the client, you gather the client statements, you identify potential issues, you talk about your credibility, how long you've been in the business, and you kind of do all the warm fuzzies. And then at some point in the meeting, you let the client know that uh, you have some ideas and that you think a second meeting is warranted and you're going to go back to the office or after they leave, you're going to spend some time uh, with your team and you're going to figure out some solutions that they can come back and then see the final results. So after the client leaves sometime between um, that point and the next meeting, you spend uh, an hour, hour and a half, 30 minutes running illustrations, talking, talking to your um your IMO or anybody that you think could help with ideas and concepts. And then a week or so later, if everything works out right, you meet with the client again and you discuss your findings, any problems that you've identified, and you start going over what your different options are. Then the client, after looking at what you have put together, decides they're going to discuss the issues that you've now identified with their current advisors. They want to, they want to check into some things, make sure Everything that you're talking about makes a lot of sense to them. And so you end up with a third meeting and this thing goes back and forth. And sometimes you end up in he said, she said uh, with the current advisor and you kind of start creating these problems for yourself. And one meeting becomes two meetings, two meetings becomes three meetings. And sometimes it can take three, four meetings or more before you finally create a client at that point. Or if things go badly, uh, things stall out somewhere along the way. So let's talk about some pitfalls that we've identified that can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the first one is not pre-educating the client. We feel that an educated client before you ever sit down and have a meeting is absolutely the, the best scenario to create for yourself. And after we go through these uh, bullet points, we're going to uh, discuss how we pre-educate the client. Making any unsubstantiated claims or generalizations, in other words, making a, a, a blanket statement without having the facts in front of you, especially when the client knows that you don't have the exact math facts in front of you, like, for instance, saying um, all variable annuities are bad or annuities are bad or brokerage accounts are bad or anything that's a generalization. You want to make sure you have your facts straight before you go in and make any type of statement. Which leads us to the next point, which is not having a complete command of the client's objectives and their current internal rate of return. Exactly how well are they performing in their current scenario and how does that relate to what they're stating their objectives are? You should always have your own personal objective be to help that client obtain the highest possible internal rate of return based on their objectives, not yours or some preconceived idea. You want to walk into a meeting. When you meet with a client, you want to be totally blank slate, open hands, palms up. You're there to, um, to find and identify problems along with the client. Next pitfall, selling any kind of prepackaged products or even walking into any meeting with any type of prepackaged scenario whatsoever or selling from brochures, anything that's a prepackaged um, situation is going to be something that's going to signal to the client immediately that you're a sales guy and that you're not there to solve their problems. An additional pitfall is having multiple meetings instead of identifying the biggest problem that that client has, the low-hanging fruit in the current meeting that you're in right now. If you can't solve their biggest problem and identify it right now, then what's the value of carrying this on for meeting after meeting after meeting? The best person to turn into a long-term client is the person that you solve some small or easily identifiable problem for immediately and fix that problem and implement a solution right now. That's the objective. So how do we level the playing field? How can you level the playing field? First of all, you want to redefine your client's understanding 
of fees and charges. And I'll show you here as we go through this, how this creates a bigger advantage than any other approach um, that you can utilize with the client. You want to inject and bring to the table an impartial evaluation tool. This is why we developed Annuity Check, which has now become Retirement Check, because this impartial evaluation tool can calculate exactly what's going on with their current situation and calculate the returns based on any scenario that you want to create, as well as allow you to um, calculate and compare an unlimited number of different um, cash flow scenarios or income scenarios for that client. So after they understand fees and charges, how do we go about figuring out what those fees and charges are? Well, we use a tool, Mr. Client, called Retirement Check that has thousands of these products built into the system. So next, you want to calculate their actual results. So you want to investigate, you want to verify, and you want to confirm exactly what's going on. If I can't figure out what's going on with their current scenario in some kind of tangible way that we can identify a number that isolates where they are, then the meeting's over at that point. I lost, they won, their advisor won, we're done. I'm not going forward unless I can identify exactly what they have and exactly how it's performed during the life of that investment, period. Once I've done that and everybody's on the same page and, and we've completely identified exactly where they are, I now want to take their results that they've obtained from the past five years, 10 years, 15 years, seven years, whatever it is, and now I want to carry those results in the form of an illustration going forward into the future. So now we know exactly how you've done. Now let's take a look at what that would look like if you continue to stay in that scenario going forward. All right, so if they're in a very good scenario, that may look very, that may look phenomenal. If they're in a, if they're in a lousy scenario, that's going to intensify the situation and create um, the motivation and the desire to get out of that situation before the future becomes the present. Then after I've illustrated those results into the future, once I've identified the problem areas, I am then going to compare to lower cost alternatives. I'm never going to compare to a higher cost alternative. So if my alternative has a fee or if I'm doing assets under management and that's a 1% fee, then I'm hopefully, hopefully comparing that against a scenario that has a 2 or 2.5 two or 2.85% of fees. So I'm always going to go from higher cost to lower cost because that's simply, that's my approach. So what is the proper mindset? The proper mindset is one, I'm in an educational mode. I go in their blank slate, open hands. I absolutely do not care if I make a sale. My objective is to go in there and educate, teach that client about the impact of excess costs. That's my number one objective, period. I'm not even thinking about anything else. I'm in an investigative, open mindset, and I want to create a shared curiosity. Let's see what you got going on. Virtually the same as if I was looking at my, my father or my grandmother's portfolio. I say, let's see exactly what we have going on here. I'm totally in a curious state, and I want to be finding out exactly where we are. The idea is, um, to paraphrase Zig Ziglar, you want to convert these wandering generalities into meaningful specifics. There is absolutely no point of setting second, third, and fourth meetings if I'm incapable of converting generalities into specifics. That is, that is where the big money is, you converting a, general, a generalization into something specific that we can do something about and that we can make meaningful comparisons with right now today. Then you want to emphasize the intolerable situations and compare it to their various options that they have at that point. Then you can explain the transfer process to get started. So, and I just actually kind of put this slide together today and it's a little bit funny, but educate, separate, obliterate. So if you think about it this way, you want to educate, you want to create a motivated, slightly angered, fully educated client or prospect to the greatest degree possible. You want them to now be educated as to exactly what's going on, what's happened and how they got to where they are today. At the end of this, you're going to usually end up, and this is why I say separate, you're going to end up with two or three, maybe one stack 
uh, different items that they have going on in their portfolios. So you can't do anything about their social security or their pensions. Those are locked in. We're talking about the liquid assets, the IRAs, the annuities, the investments, the brokerage accounts, the things that they have that they have maneuverability with. And you kind of break it into usually several stacks, maybe good, medium, and bad. So the good is the stuff that's done phenomenal. Hey, look, this, this has performed well. This has done 7%. This has done 8% since, since inception. And based on your risk profile, this is doing really phenomenal. Medium, maybe it's not, it could be doing a lot better, but it's not that bad. And then you're always going to find, or if you don't, that's okay. You just shake hands and you've made a new friend, but usually they're going to have something that's going to fall into what I call the bad stack. So at that point, we have now, we've educated them, we've separated everything, and now we're going to focus on the no-brainers. We're going to try to make and create a client going after those no-brainers or the bad. And so during this first meeting, we want to really emphasize what's going on with the, the stack of things that are, are basically intolerable. Once again, we're always comparing higher cost to lower cost. And then in addition to lower cost, Usually, and especially if you're using a uncapped uh, fixed index strategy for some of those monies, we're going for more safety. So you're going for lower cost. And oh, by the way, this also has downside protection. You then want to explain the transfer process after you've identified the low hanging fruit, the no brainers from the bad stack. And then you want to ask them, would you like me to implement the change that we've discussed to move from where you are now over into this new scenario, which is a no brainer. We have no fees or less fees, plus you have complete protection from the downside. So that's kind of the process that I flow through um, at this point. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some slides. I'm gonna roll through these rather rapidly. Um, for those of you who either are already a client um, of Retirement Check or you, you take advantage of our 30 day trial, um, so absolutely no cost to you. you have 30 days software is $99 a month. You're going to actually get access to these slides. So I'm going to go through them rather rapidly in the, in the, uh, name of time savings. And then we're going to go through the actual three-step process where we calculate, illustrate, and compare using a actual client illustration to give you a feel for, for how this process actually works when you're sitting down in front of a client. So. We generally, when we've test marketed this, we've used a seminar approach. We have a mailer that brings people in that has a variety of topics on the mailer, but at some point pretty close towards the top of the training, and we consider all seminars or meetings with clients an educational event, but we talk about removing fee hotspots. So from this point now, I'm going to talk to you as if, as if you are the, the crowd or the client, and we're going to be discussing fee hotspots. And so I say, okay, so in this next section, we're going to talk about how a 1% fee can actually be a 21% fee. Most people have a perception of a 1% fee and of all fees as just a small cut out of their full pie. And so generally I'll show my hands and I'll make a full pie kind of symbol with my hands in front of me, in front of my chest. And I said, so 1% is just a sliver. That's basically the perception or a small cut. But let's take an example. Let's say that we have a 65 year old who during their lifetime has accumulated $200,000. And at age 65, they have a investment firm partner that they take the 200,000 to, and they go and they invest the money. And we're gonna assume that the money earns 5% growth between the ages of 65 and 90. Now, at 5% growth between 65 and 90, your 200,000 would enjoy $413,666 of growth. Now that's on top of the 200,000 that was your money that you started with. So $413,000 of growth. Now, but remember, we have a 1% annual fee that's being charged on this through age 90. So out of your $413,000 of growth, you would pay $86,870 of fees. Now, that leaves you out of the 413, that leaves you 326, which is your net growth. Here is the paradigm shift I want you to have 
as a client, understanding going forward and a new way of looking at fees for the rest of your life. As a percentage of that 413,000, because you already had the 200,000, you didn't need any help from the advisor to get from zero to 200,000. You did that over the years with your hard work. But out of the growth going forward, the 86,000 represented 21% of the total growth went to the house and 79% that you got to keep. So what we're looking at here is out of the growth, what was the percentage of those fees as it relates to the total growth? Now, if you had 5% growth, like the scenario that we just described and a 2% fee, 42% would go to the house or $107,000 and you would only keep 174,000. At a 3% fee, 63% would go to the house and you would only net $120,000. So I take my time as I'm going through these slides and I may talk about some examples and, I, and I, I'll spend more time emphasizing some of the different aspects, but essentially this, Mr. Client, you took 100% of the risk, you put in 100% of the effort to accumulate your $200,000 and then you get 37% of the gain. So what starts out as a small cut ends up being a much deeper cut. According to AARP, eight out of 10 people have no idea how much they're paying in fees. So where are these fees and, and what are these fees? There's actually, there's a lot more than I'm going to show you, but I'm just gonna give you a partial listing of what we call the fine print. So there's things such as that we're all aware of, such as advisor fees. There's also things called expense ratios, wrap fees, soft dollar cost, transaction costs, redemption fees, deferred sales charges. And this isn't, this isn't even half of it. It goes on and on and on. We call this death by a thousand cuts. It's completely possible that you could have the similar type of investment to your neighbor, but be paying 10 to 15 times as much in the form of fees as the person next to you or as your neighbor on one side or the other. So what are the advantages of removing these fee hotspots? Now, we're all going to have some fees. And if you're paying for performance or you're paying an advisory fee, a lot of times these can be worth it. It's when it becomes excessive. And we identify these and we call these the hotspots. So what are the advantages if you can remove these fee hotspots? Well, one, it's going to obviously allow for greater gains during the good years. It's going to protect your principal during flat or down years. And you're going to earn more money on the money that didn't go to fees. So if you pay $1,000 in fees this year, does that $1,000 ever earn you any gains going forward again? Of course not. So the less you pay in fees, the more you have to continue compounding into the future. So there's a number of ways that we can increase your returns, but chasing the market with higher fees just isn't one of them. All right, so then I, I go into the next section and I'll have some questions and answers on that section. And I'm gonna go through this next section very fast just to show you how we set this up in our workshops. And you can implement this any way you want. And because you know this material, I'm gonna move rather rapidly. So then we talk about a section called investment ideas that no longer work. And so we're gonna talk about some things that no longer work. And we don't mean no longer work completely. Then we just mean that they're not as effective as they used to be. So the first one is CDs and money market accounts. CDs are earning or money markets accounts are earning less than a half a percent. CDs are earning between a half and 1.5 percent. So what's wrong with only earning a point and a half on your money? And then somebody will mention inflation. You say, yes, of course. Inflation's averaged around 3 percent during the last century. And you can ad lib about money markets and CDs. Um, you also miss the upside of the market. Mutual funds. And then I go into one of the most interesting things about mutual funds to me is that there's 7,700 mutual funds managing only 4,900 individual stocks. And 96% of these fail to beat the market, the major indexes. I explained the S&P, the Dow Jones. And, and then there's a research study from Dalbar from 93 to 2013. There's a number of these that you can reference, but in this one, the S&P returned 9.28, and during the same period, the average mutual fund investor made 2.54. Bonds. I explained the fact that there's a risk of interest rates with bonds, and I'll explain an example with a $1,000 bond. 
that I have that's earning 3%. Now, then I go take my bond and I try to sell it to you. But then you go to the paper and you check and you find out that you can buy the same bond and get 4%. So what do you do to make up for the difference that you can now purchase that bond for 4%? Well, what the market does is they discount that bond. So maybe you'll buy my bond for $800. Well, you can avoid that problem by keeping a bond to maturity. And then you don't have that risk because you would get your principal back. But the problem comes when you invest in something called bond funds. And, and I usually at some point in a workshop will ask how many people have heard of RMDs. But we'll talk about the fact that a lot of retirees are invested in mutual funds and a lot of bond funds. And how do you think the bond fund managers meet their liquidation requirements for RMDs and retirement income? And the fact is that with a bond fund, that there's going to be a certain amount of funds that are going to have to be continually sold to make redemptions. And as a result of that, people from three years ago have bond funds that were averaging 5%. And then last year, the returns were 3.2%. And then now we meet with them again this year, and the returns are down to one47 Four seven percent That's because interest rates are rising and their bond fund is being put in a position where because of the liquidations and because the client doesn't have the option of holding the bond to maturity, the overall return is going to be lower. And I find out that this, um, by, by mentioning this, usually results in one or two opportunities a week with somebody that's sitting there with um, several hundred thousand dollars in a bond fund. And then, of course, you also miss the upside of the market. Um, and we talk about diversification and during 2008 bonds and stocks fell at the same time. So you don't necessarily avoid everything by diversifying into bonds. I talk about the 4% rule and this is kind of a continuation of the bond discussion, but the 4% rule 1994 based on 60% stocks, 40% bonds, 30% withdrawal rate, you shouldn't run out of money. But as a result of the lower interest rates on the bond side of the equation, Morningstar had to adjust the rule to a 2.8% rule, meaning that for a million dollars, you should only withdraw 2.8% a year to um, avoid running out of money over 30 years. We're going to talk about some strategies later on in the workshop that can outperform the 4% rule and provide you an alternative with what we call a protected growth strategy. So I'm kind of setting that up. Then I also I attack most annuities and I describe what an annuity contract is to the crowd, you know, basically with an insurance company. Um, Pre-2005, there was basically two types of annuities, fixed annuities and variable annuities for retirement accounts. Fixed annuities work similar to C CD, protects the principal, but you have lower returns, has a harder time keeping up with inflation. Um, variable annuities are invested directly into the stock market. Your principal is risk at risk but they also have the highest fees. So now I'm going to tie back into the fee discussion that we had earlier, and I'm making it more product specific. So, so on variable annuities, I then continue on. we we'll say, okay, the fees can range anywhere from 2 to 4%. So what are these fees? There's things such as the mortality and expense charges, admin charges, expense ratio fees, which are similar to mutual funds, only these are on something called the sub accounts inside of the variable annuities. And then I also talk about there's death benefit riders and income riders. And I'll a lot of times use an example and set the stage for talking about income riders and these additional fees, because I'm not a large believer in these add on fees. And I'll say, how many of you in the room here have been to Best Buy? You, you go and you buy a VCR, you go and you walk up to the front counter and you're checking out what is it that they always try to sell you in addition to the VCR? Almost the whole room will say um, add on, added on insurance or an extended warranty or something like that. And then I will ask the crowd or the group, is that a good deal for you or a good deal for Best Buy? And they'll say Best Buy, almost in unison. And then I'll say, I want you to view income riders and death benefits with the same skeptical eye you would a um, purchase at Best Buy for the additional um, add-on extended warranty. And so I'll say sometimes they're a really good deal, sometimes they're a really bad deal. It's hard for you to be able to evaluate all these. So then I'll go into questions and somebody will invariably have a question similar to, well, how do I find out how much I have and all these fees and all these expenses that we're talking about? 
and then I will introduce Retirement Check. So we've actually developed a software, has thousands of these products, all the fees and everything actually built into the system. And we can actually, from a simple statement that you have, Mr. Client, plug in the starting amount that you had in that investment, all the withdrawals that you've taken out, and then how much the current value is, and it'll reverse engineer and calculate exactly what's going on, show you all your fees, your fees as a percentage of your total growth, and the actual net numbers that, that your investment returned. And so now I'm beginning to set the hook for why they need to meet with me and what we're going to do. And I've now started to create the beginning of a pre-educated or educated client because I don't want to work with a client that doesn't have any concept or idea as to how fees are impacting them. So I set the stage. So now just for your benefit, I'm going to show you um, a couple other slides that we built that we're going to make available to everybody um, that I think you would like. And this slide is protected growth using the power of zero. We talk about two phases of retirement, the accumulation phase and the decumulation phase. The decumulation phase, you're exposed to a lot of fluctuations. Um, you have to continue pulling money out, whether the market is good or bad. And there's a lot more risk during decumulation. So I want to talk to you and show you a 10 year chart here. And on the left side, we have the money. And on the right side, we have the years. But what I'm going to show you in this chart is we have 10% for five years, the market's going up 10%. Now, this is a educational experience for the uh, prospects sitting in the room. So you have five years, the market's going up 10%, and you have five years, the market's going down 10%. All right, so everybody has the picture. So if the market's going up five years, 10%, and down five years, 10%, without overthinking it, about how much is the average rate of return. Now, I always, I always preface that without overthinking it because I don't want them to get into a big equation. The answer I want is zero. And so the average return is zero. So if that's true, the next after I've got confirmation, everybody agrees it's zero. Why does $1,000 get reduced to $950? And most people will say fees because we've been talking about fees for 30 minutes or they'll say inflation or taxes. And I'm almost drawing those answers out of the group. And then I'll say, in actuality, the 1,000 becomes the 950 because of the volatility itself. And then I'm gonna give them a really simple example. I'm gonna say, let's break this down really simple. If you have $1,000 and you lose 10%, does everybody see how that would get us down to $900? Everybody goes, great, okay? I said, so the next year we gain 10% to bring our average up to zero, but which part earns the 10%, the 1,000 or the 900? And they go, ah, oh, the 900. I said, that's right. So you only earn 10% on the 900, so that only brings you back up to 990. So that's how we get to the 950. So once again, I'm educating the group as to the risks of the volatility, but I'm using a very simple, small example as to how it works so everybody can lock on to the principle. So then if you have to take money out, does the IRS care if you've had a bad year in the market? Do they care and do they say you don't have to take out your RMD this year or do they just want their money? Everybody says they just want their money. So, okay, so you have to take out the money regardless of what the market's doing. So these withdrawals add insult to injury. And so in this example, we showed how 1,000 gets reduced to 950, and then I basically set this up this way. What would happen if we took the negative years and we replaced the negative years with a zero? And then I basically show the example. If you replace the negative years with a zero and earn 10% on the up years, your $1,000 instead of going to 950 would go to $1,610. So now I've set the stage for explaining um, how I equity indexed um, annuity. So same market, different result. And so once again, I'll go several times back to the point, explaining to them how we use retirement check to calculate these options and compare different scenarios with them. So now I'm going to go ahead and bust out of that and go over to retirement check and show you how we actually utilize these strategies. So once you sign into the system, you basically have two sections. You have a primary report, which lets you choose the type of annuity, 
um, or brokerage account or user defined. We also have a very powerful cash flow analysis engine in this. And the secondary report is where we can choose what type of illustration that we're going to run. We call, we call them reports. Anytime you get lost, we have learning modules over here that can, that can explain exactly how to run the report and show examples and anything that you would need to get through that sticking point. So what I'm going to show you is an example of doing the snapshot. And I'm going to use a variable annuity as an example on here. And I actually have a variable annuity that uh, one of our software users um, emailed me last night as an example. And I have hundreds of these um, stacked around, but I thought I'd use this one as a learning experience. So you go to variable annuity and snapshot. And you put the client's name. In this case, the client's name is Jim. And let me see if I got this in the background here. So this is an actual statement. And um, I love Prudential. My dad is with Prudential for 10 years, but this is a Prudential statement here. And so the first thing, there's a couple things that you need to know to run the software. So you can't, you can't be totally void of any knowledge whatsoever being able to read a statement and be able to create a powerful experience. You have to have some basic knowledge, but not too extreme. One, we have to know the name of the company. In this case, it's Prudential, but if you're familiar with Prudential, there's Prudential Life Insurance, there's Pruco. Um, so there's a couple different carriers you may have to look at to find the right product. But we have Prudential, and we need to know the product name. In this case, it's the Pr Premier Retirement C-Series. We need to have the issue date because the software requires a date of when the investment was started. And we need to have the current contract value. In this case, it's 158. And the total amount invested, which in this case is 132. And the total withdrawals, which in this case is zero. We'll also need the date of this statement, which is um, 6 June of 2017. So I'll go back and forth to reference this, but I have most of this in my head. So I'm going to go back here and we had a issue date of five of 2011. So I'm going to go to May of 2011. We had total amount invested of 132.404. So I'm going to go 132.404. The company is Prudential, but I happen to know that this particular product is listed under Pruco, not Prudential. So there's, it's not of New Jersey. It's not Pruco annuities, not Pruco insurance. This one happens to be under Pruco. It may take you a few minutes to find it. And it's the uh, Premier um, C series, Premier Retirement VAC. So there's a lot of products listed on some of these carriers, so you got to dig around and find the correct one. So you do your homework, you find that, and then that automatically lists out the mortality and expense charges, the admin fees, and the expense ratio of that particular product scenario. Now, then it asks for other cheat, other fees and charges. Um, I'm going to go into that in a second. Um, I do know there's an income rider on here, but I'm going to leave that blank for a second. I'm going to leave the total withdrawals at zero because there was no withdrawals on this particular product. It says gross withdrawal zero. And then the value is 158,118. So 158,118. And the statement date, I believe, was uh, June of this year. So I'm going to go to June of 2017. Now, so we have the beginning date, when it started, how much was deposited, the carrier, and we've broken out the fees, and now we know the end of it. So to calculate the IRR, all I really need is the beginning amount and the date and the ending amount and the date, and I can calculate it. The fees are going to show us the percentage of fees as it relates to the growth. I'm going to adjust this because of the income rider, but I'm going to do it in the, in the second step. So if I click calculate, what this does on the first step, I've now calculated. So we're taking that wondering generality and we're going to start making it a meaningful specific. So the first thing I can look at is the fact that the 
gross rate of return on this particular investment was close to 6% based on the amount that we deposited and the current value of the contract. So we earned around 6%. Our total growth, our gross total growth was 51,376, but we had about 2.94% in fees. So our total fees were 25,662. So even though we did pretty well up here, the fees were 25,662. And as a percentage of growth, that was 49.95%. So our net gain or growth was 25,714, which is how we got to the 158, 118. So now we know that the internal rate of return is 2.96% in this particular scenario. All right, so now we've done step one, we've calculated. Now, over on the right side here, so I can download this to a PDF if I want to and create a illustration for this. So if I wanna say, okay, here's the total snapshot, here's what we did, but I'm not done yet. The next step is I've calculated, now I'm gonna illustrate. What I wanna show, I'm gonna add in the age of the client and I'm gonna show what happens if we continue on with this particular scenario from now on. So I click convert to illustration. Now that's gonna change the report over to growth and it's gonna add a column here for the age. So I'm gonna click convert. This now becomes a growth calculation and I'm gonna add in the current age. I already know that this is a 60 year old male and I also know that it's not gonna be a growth calculation because he has a income um, income writer on this, but just for fun, I'm going to calculate this to show what would happen. And the system now shows the beginning of your value and end of your value all the way through the rest of his life and shows that through his life expectancy, if he continues with this through age 82, he's going to pay 141 more thousand dollars in fees and his net growth is gonna be about 141. So 50%, in this case, ironically, 50% is gonna to go to fees. So you'll have an ending account value of 300,000. So now I've ran and I've illustrated. Um, so now I could simply, I can do a comparison here, but before I do that, I'm gonna drill this down even tighter to the reality that we're working with. And I know that he has an income writer on here and I'm going to click income writer. I'm going to go back to the statement and kind of when we dig down through the statement, we figured out that the income writer right now would pay 85, 455. And in 2033, when the client is 66, it would pay 10,247. And both of these numbers, this is 5% of the 169. This is 5% of the 204. So once you get used to looking at these, it's pretty easy because most of the statements give you enough data and a lot of your clients will be familiar with the fact that they got this guaranteed payday coming at some point. So we know 10,247 at age 66. So now I can go back and I can say, but we know you have an income writer and we know at age 66, it's gonna pay um, 10,247. But because you have that income writer, we know you're paying an additional 1% in fees on that. So now we've added in that fee and we have the gross rate of return. We have everything that we have that we need. We're showing the income, the guaranteed amount. Now I want to calculate that. So now I've calculated that income rider and now we're showing exactly what he has going on based on his current performance carried forward. We know at age 66, he can get 10,247. We know how much his fees are gonna be, even though it's chewing up a lot, he's betting on that income rider. His internal rate of return for the growth account is down to 1.81, because we're paying about 70% in fees. So, but what you can see is a couple things. If he continues along this path, he doesn't get into the carrier's pocket until about age 86. That's the point when he runs out of money and now that 10,247 continues on for as long as he lives. So that's basically his current scenario. Now, before I go on, I'm going to confirm and we're going to be completely um, in agreement 
the client and myself that this is his current scenario. So we got that current scenario. So now he's a little bit concerned. He's educated, a little bit slightly angry at the fact that he's given up $100,000 of fees. If he dies before, you know, before he gets out here, turns on this income or dies at age 80, he's chewed up a lot of money in fees and got no benefit from that income writer. So now I can do a couple things. I can do a comparison. So maybe one comparison I would want to do would be I want to now compare. So we've done step one. We've calculated Step two, we've illustrated. So we got current situation going forward based on what the client plans to do with the account. So now we've really drilled down. Now I wanna go ahead and maybe go to a different alternative. So maybe I'm gonna to go to fixed indexed annuity and um, our income writer engine is in beta, but let me show you how this works. We know he's gonna start at age 66. I'm gonna assume a 0% rate of growth because what we're trying to do here is um, um, calculate a, a guaranteed, his best guaranteed income scenario. Um, so I'm gonna show, and in this example, it shows different income writer scenarios, but I know this agent has already mentioned he was interested in this second product, Security Benefit Life. And at that age scenario, I'm gonna click calculate, and that's gonna throw that into the, into the uh, tabs up here. And so now we show Security Benefit Life, if we were to take the same money that we have in the account now at age 66, we'd have a guaranteed income of 12,708. So my first comparison, I can compare to the Pruco by hitting the compare button. And now I can say, all right, if we're just interested in guaranteed income at age 66, I can provide 2,500 more guaranteed income than your variable annuity is going to provide for you. So now we're already in a scenario where we've identified a situation that we know we can beat. I can exit out of this and maybe my next scenario is I want to show a scenario that doesn't use an income writer and I want to go to a maximum withdrawal amount. And instead of calculating an income writer, I'm going to show the income withdrawals starting at 66 through 95. And maybe I'm going to use a product and a strategy that's low in fees, and we're just gonna use withdrawals. Because now we've educated that client on fees, so maybe I go to the AIG, I go to uh, two-year point-to-point, um, and I'm gonna illustrate 5.5% um, growth, and once again, this is hypothetical, and now I'm gonna calculate the maximum withdrawals between 66 and 95, and now we have that scenario out here, 13,848. So I said, so Mr. Client, if you're interested in maintaining and protecting your account value, another scenario is to just do maximum withdrawals. And based on five and a half percent, we would run out of money at age 95. So based on the propensity of the client, how important or how much he needs those guarantees, I can compare the American General to the, to the income rider, the security benefit or to Pruco Life or I can compare any alternative to any alternative. So now that I'm done with all this, I can click save all in this. I can go into my save reports, um, go into client maps. I meet for the client for a next meeting. Um, I can click this button and it'll totally reopen all those illustrations that I just ran. I can also download all these into one simple, what I call a client map and all the client's illustrations that we just ran are in one complete PDF. So you have a complete DLL protection kit here because you have every illustration that you ran um, in this particular scenario all packaged up into one PDF document. I can also go into the save reports and click a link and email the link to another uh, person that I'm working with or my IMO, or if I'm an IMO, I can send this out to an agent and um, run these scenarios. So this is basically the process. We've been going 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, start cutting this thing off. And I know uh, there's probably um, a few questions. Um, yes, it can use, this can work for mutual funds. Um, the mobile app is gonna be available later this week. If you like what you see here, once again, this is very simple, very powerful process. This has resulted, in fact, last week, 
Uh, one of the agents have trained on this, been in the business just a little over a year, wrote 1.6 million in three days using this exact same process, like a cookie cutter time after time. And if you go through and you do these snapshots properly and you identify and you separate, so you, you're calculating and you're separating, and then you identify the really the big problem areas that you know are not aligned with your client's objectives and you use these tools properly, you'll find that you can start closing on at least one piece of business and turning prospects into clients on the first call, something around 80 to 90% of the time. And uh, so if you wanna take your production up, if you wanna make hundreds of thousands of dollars extra this year in front of the same clients, you're looking at the system that you can, that you can do it with. Now, to get started with this, you go to the front of retirement check, you can start a 30 day trial. Um, you sign up, there's some Q and A in there. If you're enterprise, you'll want to get a hold of us. You'll want to um, send us a uh, um, question uh, through the contact form. But if you're enterprise, we have a total scenario uh, for those groups. If you have a lot of people or if you want all your agents having access um, to the system. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Hope everybody has a great rest of their day. And uh, I hope to hear about some massively increased production from everybody on this um, call. Have a great day.